Hey, I'm Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist currently excavating in northern Texas, and I specialize in pre-colonial archaeology in North America and with the area that we call the Eastern Woodlands. And I've been working in this region and studying it for more than 10 years. Um, today I want to talk a little more about the first peoples of North America. I've already discussed the general narrative and given a breakdown of the Chiquihuite cave site in Mexico in a, in a couple of other videos that I'll put in the description. Um, but today I want to talk about an early pre-Clovis site called Bluefish Caves in the Yukon Territory in Canada. As I've discussed before, during the last glacial maximum, sea levels were much lower than they are at present. So a landmass called Beringia that connects Siberia and Alaska, that area was above water still, but the glacial ice sheets blocked further southward migration from this area until the ice sheets began to recede at the end of the last glacial maximum. That doesn't mean that people weren't on the continent. Um, this map up here shows the extent of the ice sheets during the last glacial maximum. And you can see that much of Alaska and the western part of the Yukon Territory is still open. And this is where Bluefish Caves is located. So two key assemblages were found here. The lithic assemblage is dominated by, by what's called blade technology. And this is totally different from the biface technology that's characteristic of Clovis spear points and most later projectile and knife technology that we get in North America. Um, so small, narrow flakes are knocked off of silica-rich stone like obsidian flint, and in this case, imported chertz. And these blades can be set into wooden or bone handles with an adhesive like a pine pitch, and then easily pulled out and replaced as they get dull or wear out or chip or break. It's a super efficient way of using stone resources because there's so little waste material in comparison to biface technology. Um, this particular blade technology that we're seeing up in the Yukon belongs to the uh, Diyukatai tradition that ranges from about 18,000 to about 10,000 years ago in Siberia and Alaska. But these people are apparently relative latecomers to the bluefish caves. Um, the caves also contain what is what are called microflakes, or those very small pieces of chip stone that are less than a quarter inch across. And these are the natural byproducts of resharpening stone tools um, so they can be reused instead of thrown away. And this type of, of stone artifact is found in much deeper strata within the caves and with a greater diversity of stone, stone types. Um, now, microflakes are very small, so it might be argued that uh, these could have been moved down fairly easily by plant roots or burrowing animals. Um, that process is called bioturbation, and it's something that we have to account for in most of, in pretty much all archaeological sites. But um, another class of evidence kind of suggests that that's not necessarily what's going on here. Um, at Bluefish Caves, the preservation of animal bone is very, very good. And fortunately, several of the bones have very unambiguous signs of human butchery. So this horse mandible here has repeated parallel striations, which is normal for butchery with stone tools. The cuts are straight across, and in cross-section, they're V-shaped instead of U-shaped. Um, experiments with stone tools show that uh, stone tool cuts produce V-shaped incisions, while uh, fake mimicking pseudo-cut marks are that can be created by abrasion against like sand or pebbles and rocks. Um, they produce shallower, more U-shaped scrapes instead of V-shaped cuts. Now, the soils inside the cave are all fine silts, so abrasion damage, mimicking butchery, wasn't really uh, terribly likely in the first place. Um, now, interestingly, the, the placement on the inside of the jaw here shows that they were removing the tongue, and apparently for food. So this piece of caribou pelvis has a similar set of cut marks on it, and these two bones, along with several others with clear, you know, un, unambiguous signs of deliberate butchery were di directly radiocarbon data. They dated those bones. Um, and they showed that the animals died and apparently were butchered as early as uh, 24,000 years ago, placing humans on the continent a full 10,000 years before Clovis technology emerges um, in North America. Now, a third group of artifacts um, that's somewhat less definitive but still worth talking about um, some bones appear to have been worked into tools themselves. 
the site reports mention a caribou bone that was split open and appears to have been polished from use. And when fresh bone is split, it can have very sharp kind of uh, spiral shaped edges that can be useful for cutting things like meat. Um, there's also the possibility that these people were actually napping mammoth bone the same way that you would uh, a flint or an obsidian and using the bone flakes as cutting tools as well. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.